What are we doing today? Well, you know, I just thought we'd take a break from all the controversy and like what brand is better than what other brand and you know how you should shoot photos and everybody's doing it wrong. I'm just like, oh, enough with that. Why don't we just get something that'll just be positive comments all around. Let's do Mac versus PC. Oh no. Welcome back, DPRV TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here. And it's Jordan Drake here. Got a bit of a different video here for you today. Uh, we're going to branch out a little bit because Jordan and I both recently got new computers for our daily work. Okay. Oh, it's beautiful. It's it's a golden calf, Jordan. It's, it's, it's idolatry. Yeah, blingy is right. Whereas I've got this slick, understated Intel computer. Anyways, understated. <laughs> there's a lot of videos out there comparing the new M1-based Apples against high-end Intel computers. And honestly, we don't want to get into those benchmarks and stuff. I mean, a lot of other people do that way better than we ever could. Yeah. We want to look today at how these computers work for more real-world applications the way that we use them. Yeah, right? so we're doing constant photo and video editing in a variety variety of applications, so we're going to go through some of those today. Absolutely. We've got some interesting tests. We're going to go through Lightroom and Capture One today. We're going to go through video editing programs like DaVinci Resolve and Final right, Cut. Okay. Yeah. And we're even going to do a little bit of gaming because no, I think that's fair. It even doesn't though it's factor <laughs> into the point of this video at all. Now, I have always been a loyal Windows PC user. I used to build a lot of computers, putting components together, and I love not only the fun of that, but the idea that with Windows computers, you're using many different companies, mixing and matching parts, and I just love that kind of free enterprise, open market kind of feeling, as opposed to the evil conglomerate, the Mac monopoly and its oh, way geez. of oppressing people. So, you know, I also do a lot of gaming, and that's a big part of it, right? I want to be able to create on my computer, but I also also love games and in that way Windows makes a lot of sense whereas Jordan has been gaming celibate for a long time. Yeah I don't do a lot of gaming now but I actually growing up was a really big computer guy built my own computers played a lot of games and I was a big PC user until I got into video editing and Final Cut was just the best game in town we're talking like 14 years ago. I bought a Mac, I haven't looked back since, and I've kind of fallen off the computer bandwagon. I mean, I don't know what these GPUs and SSDs and things are. I just grab a few thousand dollars, walk into the Apple store every three or four years and say like, turn these monies into a computer and they give me a new Mac and it edits video very well. Now, throughout all of this, Chris has given me an incredibly hard time of like, Jordan, you could just get more raw performance for the same amount of money with a PC. But honestly, I think with these new M1 Macs, the tables might have turned. You're enslaved to your golden overlord. So the computer that I'm using today, this is a Gigabyte Aero 15 YD. This has Intel's i9 chip. It's their 11th gen chip. It's got an NVIDIA RTX 3080, fantastic. 32 gigs of RAM, so a very powerful rig overall. I especially love the fact that now this computer actually intelligently scales the CPU and GPU overclocking and fan control based on whether I'm surfing the net or editing video or gaming, and that's been really convenient. It's a huge step up from what I bought originally, which is a Gigabyte Aorus 15. Now, that had some good specs in it, but it's three years old, i7 chip, RTX 2070. It did a good job for gaming, but for editing videos, I never felt confident doing 4K. It was always quite slow. I had to use proxy files and it just wasn't ideal. So this is what I needed. Now, this is admittedly quite an expensive computer um, and it kind of hurts a little bit because I always gave Jordan such a hard time for how much more affordable PCs were for the same amount of performance. So Chris and I both used desktop computers until we started working for DP Review. Then we used laptops because we were traveling quite a bit. Now, for obvious reasons, travel hasn't been quite as much of a part of our lives. So since then, I've picked up the iMac 24 inch M1 version with 16 gigs of RAM. Now you might be thinking desktop versus laptop, it's not fair at all. But the cool thing with the M1s is whether you get the iMac, the MacBook Pro, or even like a Mac mini or something, they're all using the same basic components. So performance will be really similar across them. I just wanted a nice fancy screen and I like the gold color that comes along with this. But I'm coming from a three year old i7 MacBook Pro that cost me like $4,500 when I got it. Chris gave me a really hard time on that. And we're gonna see how the performance comes pairs. So for our first test, we're going to talk about photography. I mean, programs like Lightroom and Capture One utilize a lot of components of your computer. The speed of your drives, processing power, video cards, it all plays a factor. We're going to start with Adobe Lightroom and we're going to import RAWs and edit them. And again, we're really focusing on the performance just on a real world day to day kind of situation, yeah. how we would work with them. Exactly. And I want to say we're not running any kind of screen recording software because it can slow the computers down. So enjoy the reflections <laughs> on the screen. So basically starting up Lightroom, we had no issues 
there. Both computers are basically the same speed, very quick. Importing 240 files, again, very fast, no issues there. Now, when we worked with the Sony a7R 4 file, because it's a large RAW 61 file, megapixels. Yeah, we actually had no issues there either. Basically, any changes we made to white balance or exposure happened real time. Yeah, on both computers. So there was one issue though when it came to then applying those edits to all 240 files for our time lapse. Yeah, so this is something I do all the time when I'm doing time lapses. I'll mm -hmm. take a whole bunch of raw files, you know, make a basic edit, apply it to all of them. Mm -hmm. And on my older i7 computer, as soon as I apply it, you're just waiting forever for it to actually apply those changes. Where on the new M1, it was just like click, boom, it's ready to go. Yeah, you were like, I'm done already. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I still have quite a few seconds left of editing. So yeah, there was a bit of slowdown there, but then we had to to export those files to JPEGs. Let's do it now. Go. All right, Lightroom is rendering. Yep, it's going. Half done. Half done? Half done. I'm gonna say this computer's twice as fast because I'm done. Done! Wow. Done! That is oh. pretty amazing. So while Jordan's M1 still tries to finish exporting those JPEGs, let's talk about our next test. So then we went into Capture One, another really nice program that we love to use for photography. Both computers equally started up Capture One nice and quick. And when we edited a large Sony a7R 4 RAW file, we noticed exactly the same kind of slowdown. There's a fraction of a second of delay when you make an exposure change or white balance change to when it updates. But again, it was quick and it was equal on both computers. Now, when you do import files into Capture One, there's a little bit of time taken where it uh, makes previews for all those files but again we had basically an equivalent amount of time so for, so far we're on a level playing field now when it came to making an edit in our time lapse and then applying it batch process to all the photos my computer did a perfectly fine job same as Jordan's it was almost instantaneous so we had no issue there but I think Jordan's almost done so let's get into exporting the capture one raws into JPEGs next okay capture one render test in three two one, export. Go. Now we wait for your loud ass fan. <laughs> Three, two, I'm done. Oh, I'm, I'm, done. Still, I'm like 85%. Okay, so yeah, it took about a minute longer to export this on my M1 than on Chris's PC. But what I find really interesting is the results are definitely closer using Capture One than Lightroom. I just think Capture One's better optimized for the M1. So Jordan, it looks like when it comes to photo editing, the Gigabyte photo Arrow exporting. Yeah, the Gigabyte Arrow has an advantage in both platforms. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of research we've done that kind of backs that up. I mean, our tests here are pretty simple. There's actually a nice article on deepreview.com. You guys should check it out. It links in the description below. That'll give you more varied tests that you can kind of see how these computers perform against each other. But yeah, it was the exporting, right? I mean, that doesn't really change your life that much. Exactly. So when we were both editing our photos, I would say performance was really on par. Mm -hmm. You know, both very responsive, and that's really where you're spending most of your time. It's not like you're constantly waiting for exports with photography. Yeah. Most of the time you're editing images, and they were both fantastic in that regard. Yeah, and that's good to see that it was the same on both platforms. So really, if you like Capture One or if you like Lightroom, you're good to go on either one. But Let's see now, I'm a little worried about this next test. How are these computers gonna do for video editing? Ooh. So for our video comparison, we decided to use DaVinci Resolve because it's available for PC and Mac and it's pretty well optimized for both of our machines. We didn't use Premiere because Chris and I don't like Premiere. So other people are reviewing Premiere, go watch their videos. But we decided on kind of a torture test for this. We really wanted some 10-bit high-resolution footage because that's what made our older i7s just chug on both the Mac and PC side. So we've got 5.9K 10-bit footage. I asked Chris, what's some footage of things you do around the house? And this is what he gave me. It was boring. So I decided we'd do a little picture-in-picture -picture of the fish. I guess that makes this more exciting and compelling. So when we're playing back just a single layer of that 5.9K footage on both computers, there's a tiny stutter right when you hit playback, but then it smooths out very quickly. And it would play at full 24 frames per second, the length of the clip until we applied a second layer. Now, once we had two stack layers of 5.9K 10-bit footage, then both of them dropped enormously, and we're looking at like one, two frames per second while you're working with those. So I would say this is very usable for working with high-resolution 10-bit footage, unless you're doing like multicam or something like that. But in most of those situations, I'd wind up using proxies anyways. It's very impressive. So now it's time to export our 5.9K 10-bit file out of the S1H. We ended up with a 30-second clip with two 
5.9K files, one stacked on top of the other. We're going to export these as 4K, sampling them down through DaVinci Resolve. Let's start rendering and see what happens. Okay, DaVinci render in three, two, one. Done! Oh, you son of a... It's okay. All, it's all the hot air that my, my fan blew onto your computer, slowing it 95%. down. 95% and 100%. Yes. Okay. A minute and four seconds. 56 seconds. Very nice. So yes, Chris did win the render challenge between our two computers, but it was so minor. I mean, 56 seconds versus a minute and four seconds. It's nothing that would really impact your quality of life day to day. So I think if you're editing videos, both of these are going to be a great option. However, I have a little thing called Final Cut, which is made by Apple, who is the company that made the M1 chip that's in this computer. So they should play together really nicely. And what I found there, when I was editing, I could have multiple layers of 5.9K 10-bit footage stacked on top of each other with text and it's playing back in real time. So it is just much more responsive than Resolve if you're going to do multiple tracks of high resolution footage. It's incredibly impressive. And on top of that, when I did an export of it, it came out at 47 seconds, so faster even than Chris's computer with Resolve. If you're not set in another editing system and you have an M1 computer, you will see real world advantages to editing in Final Cut Pro, which is why I'm going to do that and Chris can't. This is unfair and I protest. Let us know in the comments below if you think this is unfair. Now, speaking of unfair test, Jordan, for our final one, let's do gaming next. No, where, like, look at the title. Do you see gaming comparison? We're talking benchmarks? about what we use our computers for day to day, and this is something this that is very one of us does use them for. So, uh, you know, you used to game. Well, like back in the, okay, so what's the benchmark these days? Is it still like Quake or like Forsaken? What do we use to test these things? You've just lost everybody under 30 years of age, but, uh, you know, you can look it up in a book or something. No, we're actually going to play a modern game, Metro Exodus, and actually, this is something that the M1 chip is compatible with. There are a fair amount of games that this computer can play. So what? I know that's why I thought you don't just have to be stuck with Civ 5 anymore, Jordan. You can play other things. So for our first test, we want to run both computers at 4K resolution, which is pretty punishing for computers to deliver. We have everything at medium quality settings, and I tried to turn off as much NVIDIA specific stuff as I could. Ray tracing is still on, but at its lowest setting, and I've turned off NVIDIA DLSS and VSR settings. Now you can see on my what? computer, I'm yeah, don't worry about it, Jordan. So I'm still getting a playable frame rate, just hovering around the 40 frames per second mark on average. Unfortunately, Jordan's computer is down to 12 to 19 frames per second, just unfortunately not playable. So clearly, the Arrow is going to be the better gaming computer. Then I decided to turn on those features like NVIDIA's DLSS, which give me a performance boost, as well as VSR, uh, and with that variable shading rate. Yes, I was able to get a performance boost, getting up to that sort of ideal 60 frame per second second rate. So uh, unfortunately, the M1 is just not going to cut it. But we did want to find out what can the Apple M1 play Metro Exodus at? Well, when we scaled things down to 1080 and kept everything at medium settings, we actually got a very playable frame rate of around 45 to 60 frames per second, averaging around 50. So Jordan could partake in the fun if he wanted to at reduced settings. So if I'm hearing Chris correctly, it sounds like I could play video games from the last 10 years on my M1 iMac, but I watched Chris play a video game even for a few minutes, and it just seems very confusing and very busy and flashing lights, and there were dead bodies. It seems very violent. I just don't know if that's the kind of activity I really want to partake in. You're unbelievable, man. You used to be a hardcore gamer. Are you okay? I'm so sorry you had to see Why that. Why are you that apologizing was, to them? I had to see the things. apologizing for you. That, yeah. Okay, anyways, all that aside, I think what we can tell from our test here today, although on paper with all the be you know, benchmarks and research, the i9 chip is supposed to perform slightly better than an M1, for you know, real world stuff that we're doing today, editing photos and videos, I mean, basically they're identical. No, when you're working, it felt the same, whichever yeah. of the two machines you were on. This really wouldn't make a difference going one way or the other between the two until you factor in price. Yeah, and that was surprising because I'm always so used to giving you such a hard time yes, spending he does. so much money, giving Apple so much money, and yet I think if somebody was like starting out on more of a budget and they still want a performance, I don't know how you would steer them away from this. Yeah, and also this is the first generation of those things. We know there's going to be some pro stuff coming. I'm probably going to pick it up, and it's just going to destroy this thing. Get ready, unless I wanted to play a video game, which I don't. Yeah, and I mean, you know, that is a key thing. I mean, I do still think that the Arrow as a laptop that can do both 
creative work, editing, and also high-end gaming, this is exactly what I want and it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. There's no comparison when it comes to gaming, but really, you guys will have to decide what's most important to you and what you really get out of a computer. As we mentioned earlier, this is something that no one has strong feelings about, but if you happen <laughs> to, you should leave a comment in the uh, little thingy below there. Yeah, absolutely. And don't forget, uh, we'll be back with more DP Review TV, which has been lovingly edited on this beautiful 24-inch iMac, and we'll see you guys all again very Yeah, soon. which could be also perfectly capably edited on this beautiful Yeah, it, like you're going to start editing yeah. video. That's going to happen. I guess we're going to have to probably do more videos about computers. <laughs> yeah, one episode uh, a month if that happens. See you guys later. I'm so sorry. If you're... Stop apologizing to this. But I watched Chris play a video game even for a few minutes and it seems very busy and confusing and there's flashing lights and it's dreadfully violent so I don't... <laughs> but I watched Chris play a video game for just a few minutes and it just seems... <laughs> and it seems very confusing and busy. <laughs>